Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we enter into a brand new church year. The church's year always begins with us hearing about Jesus entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. <coughs> He comes into Jerusalem, just as the prophet Isaiah foretold. Behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus comes into the city of David as the son of David to rule, to reign. He comes as the king of Jerusalem, but he does not come as an earthly king arrives. He doesn't come with the earthly goals of power dominion and exercising lordship over his subjects, he comes into Jerusalem as a different kind of king entirely. No war horse, no chariot like a Caesar. He arrives rather in a lowly fashion, riding a donkey of all things, and a borrowed one at that. He comes in humility and lowliness because he comes not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He serves mankind by bearing the burden that mankind cannot bear. St. Paul tells us that God and the Father made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. St. Paul wrote in Galatians 3 that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become the curse for us. Christ comes in humility and lowliness, to bear the sin of the world, and to bear the curse that falls upon all men, women, and children born in the natural way. The curse of condemnation of the law, the curse of death, since it is the wages of sin. He advents among his people to bear their sin as the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, to make full payment for every sin ever sinned in thought, word, and deed, so that all who trust in his atoning death and believe in that for them have everything that he wins for them. The perfect remission of sins, the Holy Spirit, the adoption as sons, and the promise of everlasting life. And so he comes, he arrives, he advents, as one who is perfectly righteous, so that he may die for the unrighteous. Perfectly righteous, so that those who place their confidence in his sufferings and death may not only be forgiven of their sins, but declared to be perfectly righteous in God's sight as Christ is. So the God the Father sees believers as without spot or without the blemish of sin. And the congregation of believers, the daughters of Jerusalem, then go out to meet him. They go out to meet him as he advents there in Jerusalem. St. Matthew tells us a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed after, they cut, or excuse me, they cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Look how they meet their Lord. They meet his humility with their own. They don't think little of his lowliness. His humility doesn't lead them to haughtiness, to look down upon his lowliness and say, well, frankly, God, this is nice, but we expected something a little flashier or something a little more powerful. No, they don't despise him because of his humility and lowliness. They don't think little of him because of his lack of pomp and power. They run before him. They run after him. They spread their outer garments on the road, paving a royal highway for him. Others cut down branches from palm trees. St. Matthew doesn't tell us they're palms, but St. John does in John chapter 12. They cut down palm branches from the trees, an ancient symbol of victory, and lay them at his feet. They go ahead of him and behind him, crying out in faith, Hosanna to the son of David. Because they believe him to be the Messiah, King David's greater son, entering into David's city to begin his reign. And they humbly implore him with that word from Psalm 118, Hosanna, to save them. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem is a picture of his entire advent among us in the flesh. 
Advent means coming or arrival. His coming in the flesh, not just at the beginning of Holy Week, but all throughout his first coming, is marked by humility and lowliness and gentleness. St. Paul described this humility in 2 Corinthians 8 9 when he says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet he became for our sakes poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. He comes in gentleness. Yes, he has harsh words for those who are impenitent and unyielding, those who trust in their own righteousness. But to those who are penitent and believing, he comes as a shepherd to be compassionate on those sheep without a shepherd. He preaches good news of the kingdom of heaven to those who are penitent for their sin, those who are poor in spirit, who realize they have nothing to offer to God. He preaches repentance and mercy for all those who live lives of repentance. He spoke tenderly to all who approached him in faith, speaking mercy for them and for their loved ones. And he never, in all of his ministry, turned away one who came to him in penitent faith. For that was his purpose of his first advent, his first coming, to seek and to save that which was lost, to earn and bring the medicine of immortality to those who come to him admitting their sin and the death in their flesh. The days of his humiliation, they culminated with his sufferings and death that followed this entry into Jerusalem that we hear about. And not only his death, but the most shameful and tormenting death of the death upon the cross. And yet, he rose on the third day from the dead no longer concealing the glory that he had with the Father from eternity. And yet, even though he rises in glory and he ascends to the right hand of the Father, yet the humility of his ministry continues. For he sent out twelve ordinary men of flesh and blood who themselves had the sinful flesh. And he gave those twelve men humble tools for bringing people to faith in his saving grace, he gave them the tools of the gospel, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. And in fact, it is through these means of his word and his sacraments that Jesus still then advents among us today, through the ministry which continues on to the church. For it is through these means, water, simple water combined with his word, bread and wine combined with his word of promise, the gospel preached and read and meditated upon. It is through these humble means that he brings us his mercy, his forgiveness, salvation, and the newness of life and the Holy Spirit along with it, just as he did during the days of his earthly ministry. As Jesus came to win for his people the forgiveness of sins and his salvation and the Holy Spirit, now through his ministry, through men, and through his word, he continues to come among us humbly to give us all that he won for us in his life and in his death. And so the Lord advents among us in his word and sacrament. And how then are we to meet him as he comes among us today? Next Sunday, the Sunday after that, and every day in between as we hear and meditate upon his word, look to the crowd on Palm Sunday. They go out to meet Christ, and they remove their outer garments, and they lay them at his feet, preparing that royal highway for him. And that's precisely what you and I are to do as well. Not physically, of course, but rather spiritually. We are, St. Paul says, to put off the old man with his deeds. Jude calls the sinful nature the garment that is defiled by the flesh. And in today's epistle lesson, we heard St. Paul write, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. As the crowd took off their outer garments and laid them before Christ so that he would trample them underfoot, so we put off the old man with its evil lusts and desires, with its sinful thoughts and deeds, and we lay the old man at Jesus' feet so that he may trample it. St. Paul says, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on 
the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Put off the old man and put on the new. Put off the garment defiled by the flesh and put on the garment of Christ and his righteousness instead. Put off the sinful nature by daily repentance of every sinful thought and word and deed. And put on instead the armor of light, which is Christ himself, who is the light of the world. And we do this by faith. For Jeremiah 33, 16, in that verse, the Lord tells his people that they would be called the Lord our righteousness. Just as in today's Old Testament lesson, we heard that the city of Jerusalem... God's people would be called the Lord our righteousness, because our righteousness is not our own, but rather it is ours by faith. It's the Lord Jesus' righteousness, which we wear as our daily garment and dress. And we can't wear the armor of light, we can't wear Christ himself as our garment, if we're still wearing the garment defiled by the sinful flesh. Which is why we must put off the old and put on the new each day instead. Wearing Christ's righteousness by faith, living in the gospel each day, that our sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. In that joy, in that peace, Paul says we are to walk properly as in the day. After all, we wear the armor of light. And in doing so, we make no provision whatsoever for the flesh to fulfill its lusts and to allow it to reign over us so that we do what it wants. Again, if we go back to the crowd, we see more of how we're to meet our coming Lord Jesus. They cut down palm branches from the trees and they laid them at Jesus' feet. Well, palm branches are a symbol of victory. In fact, in Revelation 7, verse 9, St. John sees a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. St. Matthew tells us in today's gospel that they spread these branches on the road before Christ. And we are to do the same in the spirit when we praise Christ for the victory that he gives us over temptation and sin. We don't conquer any temptation. We don't have victory over any sin by our own power, or by our own holiness. But rather it is by Christ in us that we trample down the works of the devil in us. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us that he brings about his fruit and that we conquer temptation. We conquer because Christ dwells in our hearts by faith. He works his victory in us. After all, this is why Jesus says in John 15, 5, without me you can do nothing. And so we then, as often each day as we are victorious over sins and temptations, we do not congratulate ourselves but we give thanks to Christ Jesus for the victory that he gives us each day by dwelling in us. The crowd as well cries out, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. They sing God's praises through the Psalms, especially Psalm 118 where David writes, Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That save now in Hebrew is... Hosanna, for this is what they say. They praise him with the word of God, asking for his salvation and trusting, confidently believing that he brings it to them. And so too our mouths are to be filled with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, St. Paul says. We are to be daily imbibing his word so that we may praise him with his very words, speaking his words back to him asking for the salvation he comes to bring and confidently believing each day his promise that he brings it through his word, through his sacrament. The church, even from early times, has put this very song upon our lips where we sing right before the Lord's Prayer and the words of institution, the Sanctus, in preparation of Christ's true bodily presence among us in his sacrament of the Lord's Supper. For where he comes to bring us his gifts, forgiveness, freeing us from sin, uniting with us in his body and blood, strengthening us with his Holy Spirit, nourishing us and our faith. Christ's first advent in the flesh teaches us not only how he advented then, but how he advents among us now. 
and then how we are to receive him daily as he comes to us in his word and in his sacrament. It may seem odd to us that as we begin the season of Advent, and really the new church year, that we hear of Christ's Advent in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And we'll hear this same reading again on Palm Sunday itself. But today, as we begin a new year, this text sets the tone not only for the season of Advent, but it sets the tone for the entire year of the church, for our entire yearly meditation upon Christ and his gifts. For Christ daily, each day throughout this year, comes to us in his word. He weekly comes to us and Advents among us in his divine service through the preaching of his word, through his holy sacrament. He is always adventing among us, humbly and in lowliness, to forgive our sins, to strengthen our faith, to renew us with his Holy Spirit, so that we then are prepared each day for his final advent in the flesh, for that day in which he returns to judge the living and the dead. If we humbly receive his advent among us in this life, if we live each day in humble repentance for our sins, if we live each day believing joyfully the gospel and putting off the old and putting on the new each day, then, dear saints, we are well prepared for his final advent on the last day. Take effort, therefore, to be more diligent than you already are. For as St. Paul reminds us, we know that the time is now high. It's high time to wake out of sleep. For our salvation is nearer now to us than when we first believed. May God grant us such diligence and such renewed faith through his Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God which far surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise. We turn to page 22 and sing the offertory. <laughs>